All right, welcome back. Power of the purse. All right, so what exactly are we talking about when we say power of the purse? We're talking about Congress's budget power. So they are in control of the money. So we call that bu uh, budget power or power of the purse. You can use those interchangeably. You could see either one on a test question for sure. So again, Congress creates and passes a federal budget. Later in the year, we'll go into a little bit more detail on that and how that works with both the President and Congress having roles in that process. But for right now, uh, we're going to talk about focus on different ways that Congress exerts their power of the purse. All right, one is through the passage of pork barrel legislation. So this is legislation that brings tangible benefits to a district. We're thinking of things here like money, jobs, and programs. So representatives, when they're debating bills and discussing bills and trying to get bills passed, one of their main considerations is how to get reelected. And something that they do in order to get reelected is they want to bring back something to their constituents. They want to show that they have done something for the people that they are representing. So they fight to get things like jobs, like for instance, if the government is going to spend money on some kind of program, they want that spending to take place in their home district um, so that they can come back and say, hey, look what I did for you guys. I got this job, this program, etc., this money for us. Um, and that helps them with re-election. All right, very closely related is the term earmarks. Earmarks are money appropriated for a specific project. So earmarks have gone back and forth between whether they're allowed or not allowed since like 2011. They haven't been allowed, but as of 2018, uh, Congress was talking about reallowing earmarks. So don't worry about that part of it. Just our definition here, it's money appropriated or set aside for a specific project. So instead of saying it's for this general purpose, it says exactly how it will be spent and who will get that money. Typically, Congress doesn't do that. They say, here's the money, here's how it will be spent, and here's what it's going to buy. It's going to be for this. But then other people are in charge of actually spending that money and determining who exactly that money goes to. So this gives Congress a little bit more specific control um, over money and how it's spent. All right, we have, again, with this power of the purse, it's kind of a two-step thing. Congress authorizes spending, and then they appropriate the money. So step one is congressional authorization, and this is where Congress authorizes or allows a budget. They say, all right, this spending is allowed to take place, so we are authorizing that we will spend X amount of dollars for X project. Step two, dot, 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 is appropriation. This is where Congress actually provides the money to be spent as part of what they had just authorized. So with that authorization, that was Congress saying a money is allowed to be spent on something, but if they stop there, the money isn't actually ever given, and so it can't be spent. So appropriation is going to be just as important. This is when they actually give the money or provide the money to whomever it is in order to spend it um, as part of what had been previously authorized. And finally, the Congressional Budget Act of 1974, it did a lot of things, and we'll talk about some of them later in the year, um, but for right now, we're going to focus on one thing that it did, which was it required presidents to spend all appropriated funds. So we know that Congress has budget power, power of the purse. They're the ones who set aside money. That's what appropriation means, by the way, in this context, to set aside money to be spent. So when Congress appropriates money, they are allowed to tell the president now, according to this law, that you must spend all of it. Nixon had tried to save some of it. He wouldn't spend you know, everything that they gave him because he thought it was too much wasteful spending. So he decided to impound the money, which means if you think about a car getting impounded, it's like locked up. Nobody has access to it. It's the same thing that Nixon was doing with money. Now, just to, as a disclaimer, this wasn't something that was corrupt. He was doing it with the intention of limiting government spending. Um, so he was not stealing this for himself. He was putting it aside for the federal government to spend later, but Congress passed this law saying that he couldn't do that anymore. So no more impoundment. Presidents must spend all appropriated funds. All right, remember, hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. This has been a La Money Production.